You can crave change with every fiber of your being and still sabotage it every single time. Not because you're weak, but because your brain is wired to protect the life that you say you no longer want. So in this video today, I want to talk to you about the neuroscience behind identity, behind survival mode that is your current reality and how to actually rewire them both so that change finally sticks. Hello angels and welcome back. The truth is the life that you want for yourself isn't that far away. Your nervous system just isn't convinced enough yet that it's safe enough for you to become her. This is the neuroscience behind identity and embodiment and I'm going to show you exactly how. Okay, so let's start here. Change does not begin with your habits first. It actually begins with your identity, with how you see yourself. So every time you say to yourself, oh, I'm always late. Oh, I never stick to it. Oh, I'm just not good with money. Your brain doesn't question it. It just simply records it. Okay, got it. That's who we are. Then it wires your behaviors to match it. That's identity reinforcement and it's happening whether you're conscious of it or not. And the powerful part of this is that those neural pathways will wire through repetition, which means you can rewire them in the exact same way. So when you start telling yourself, I follow through on things. I feel safe being seen. I feel safe being successful. Everything works out for me. Your brain starts looking for evidence in the external world to support that version of you. And in time, that external reality of yours is gonna start reflecting and mirroring back to you that internal identity shift. Just as Joe Dispenza says, to change your personal reality, you must change your personality. And your personality is shaped by what you consistently tell yourself, what you consistently believe about yourself. You see, your brain was built for survival, not for transformation transformation. Your brain isn't wired to make you happy. It's wired to keep you alive by predicting what's going to happen next. So it scans your environment and goes, okay, so what happened yesterday? And then goes on to repeat that. This is a process called homostatus. It's your system's way of resisting change so that you can stay stable. And I'm saying all this, but your brain is also built to adapt. Through neuroplasticity, you can retrain it to respond differently. And not by force and change, but by using your biology. As I've said, your brain runs on predictions. Break them, you're going to create change. Every repeated behavior becomes a neural loop. So hit and snooze, avoiding the task or doom scrolling. But when you do something different, just once, you create what neuroscience calls prediction error. That little jolt of, wait, hang on a second, this is not what we usually do. That forces your brain to update. So if your brain expects you to doom scroll for an hour when you become overwhelmed, pause instead. If it expects you to snooze, then get up. Because even tiny little shifts actually send a signal to the brain going, okay, we're not her anymore. It's not about doing anything big. It's about doing something different consistently. That's how you train your brain to align to a new identity. Now, let me say this clearly. You can journal, you can meditate with Joe Dispenza, you can vision board your entire future. But if your body still feels unsafe and receiving that, then you are gonna go on to reject everything you were trying to call in for yourself. Because to your system, that's not resistance, it's protection. Transformation happens in the body when it finally feels safe. Safe to be visible, safe to be successful, safe to expect and receive more. And that kind of safety isn't built through your thoughts, it's built through your body. Through somatic work like breath work, EFT, grounding exercises, even movement and shaking. Those practices are gonna regulate your neuroception, the body's subconscious system that scans your environment for danger or safety. And the goal here is to create safety within your body. Because for a lot of people, you can't tell the difference between being threatened by a big bear in the woods versus you being seen and successful. You want to feel safe showing up. You want to be safe feeling seen. You want to be safe to expect better for yourself. And I urge you, please don't skip this particular part because this is the part that I find that most people struggle with when it comes to manifesting the life that they want for themselves. So please do not skip this. Okay, moving on. In spiritual circles, we call it alignment. But in neuroscience, it's the reticular activating system, the RAS, just doing its job. The RAS is your brain's filter. It filters in your reality through to you and it dictates what gets your attention and what gets ignored. But it doesn't filter it through truth. It's filtering it based upon your beliefs. So if you subconsciously expect to see struggle, fear, rejection, guess what your RAS is going to highlight? Everything in your reality that proves that's true. But if you start expecting possibilities or abundance, your RAS has to then filter in your reality to match that. And here's where it gets even more powerful. This is not just about perception. This is about how you move. This trend and idea of delusional confidence actually has a scientific name. It's the Rosenthal effect. It shows that when you expect great things to happen, you unconsciously act in ways to make them happen. I mean, after all, your beliefs shape your behavior, right? So if you carry yourself like it's already yours, if you speak with confidence, if you move with certainty and you genuinely expect 
expect everything to work out for you. Not only does your brain go on to filter this reality differently to you, but people start actually responding differently to you too. But let's go a little bit deeper with that because your brain is constantly editing itself through a process called neural pruning. It starts eliminating the neural pathways that are no longer in use. So if you stop feeding those stories of, I'm always late, nothing works out for me, money is hard to come by, and you stop emotionally responding to them, then your brain will delete them. That's not just energetic alignment, that is biological alignment. You're creating new thoughts, new emotions, new beliefs, new frequencies, and as a result, you attract new outcomes. Not because you had to force your way there, but because you have become a match to them. But let's take it a little bit further because you're not just shaped by your internal world. Your brain has mirror neurons, cells that simply fire just by observing someone else. So when you spend time around people who are creative, who are confident, who are abundant, your brain starts actually learn in their patterns without any conscious effort. This is why your environment matters. Who you follow, who you listen to, who you let into your space, whether that's physically or in the digital world. It's all shaping your internal reality and your nervous system is consistently responding to the emotional tone of your environment. So I'm telling you, if you want to evolve, immerse yourself in environments that truly reflect who you're becoming. Because you could do all the inner work, but if your outer world still keeps dragging you back to that same old version of you, then you're gonna keep hitting the same ceilings. Now it's all good of me saying all of that, but how do you actually start applying this today? Well, of course I'm going to tell you. Okay. Step one that I advise you to do is create micro prediction errors. Just do one small thing a day that your brain doesn't expect. The goal is to gently interrupt your everyday routine so that it signals to the brain we're doing things differently nowadays. You can get up earlier. You can start your day differently. You can chug a bottle of water before you drink your coffee. It could be that small. Then number two, I would say change your identity script because your identity is just the story that you are consciously and unconsciously telling yourself every day about yourself. Whether that's through your self-talk, your habits, your emotions, your frequency, your beliefs, your routines, whatever it may be. To shift this, we need to consciously rewrite that script and then rehearse it like your life depends on it, because it kind of does. So create new I am statements. You can say them every day or you can record them on your phone. I like to record them on my phone as a self rampage. But when you are recording them or when you are saying them, I want you to speak with emotion, speak with emotional conviction like it's already here, like it's already now. Heck, even put frequency music on in the background just to help ump it up, make it cinematic. This is your moment. We want this to shift everything within you, including how you're feeling in the moment when you're listening to it. I don't want it to be about robotic affirmations. I want it to ignite something in you. I want you to feel it in your body. And I want you to listen to that every day, consciously and unconsciously. You can be listening to it whilst you're driving, walking, working out, or doing the most mindless tasks of your day. Because even if you're not consciously listening, the subconscious mind is always open and receptive and aware to it. Because over time, that's going to reprogram your subconscious beliefs. It's going to reprogram your nervous system. It's going to completely reprogram what your RAS starts to take in and filter as your reality. My number three would be regulate your nervous system. As I've said, please do not skip this part. This is a big obstacle for many people I speak to. Even 120 seconds of breath work or EFT tapping is enough to soothe your nervous system. 120 seconds. If you don't know what worked for you, I urge you to check out my video. I will link it below about how EFT changed my life drastically and how I think it can change yours too. But you're going to find your own. And the only key here is to stay consistent. Even when you think nothing is changing to keep showing up for yourself, regulating your nervous system and creating safety in the body to receive and manifest better for yourself. The more you go on to choose safety, the more your body is going to choose to believe that. Okay. Number four, visualize your future self often. Now I like to do this when my self rampage is playing first thing in the morning and last thing at night, I do a whole visualization of everything I'm saying. I find it much easier to do it that way. A lot of people prefer to just go on a walk and daydream. Some people sit down and deep meditation, do it. You're going to find your way, but essentially the more vividly you can see this vision, the more your brain goes on to accept it as real. And the more you do this, the more your brain becomes wired to that new reality. And it's going to start bending the timeline that you're on. And lastly, number five, which would be curate your goddamn environment. Listen, your brain is always automatically mirroring everyone else. Your brain is always listening. So choose wisely. And just remember this transformation that you are seeking so much is not about becoming someone new. It's about letting go of everything that was never really you to begin with and returning home to who you always have been. As always, if you like this kind of content, if you're into personal development, if you're into manifestation, if you're into expansion in any shape or form, then I urge you, please subscribe, please like, please follow. Let's become friends. And as always, I will see you soon. Mwah.